What's up Ninja Clan, it's Poir and welcome to my weapon guide video for Sunbreak's Longsword. This video will dive deeper into the more advanced stuff as well as the new best combos to do for Longsword. Longsword has become a lot more varied than ever before in Sunbreak, making it a funner weapon once you get comfortable with the new moves. So elephant in the room, Longsword was nerfed. Its bread and butter playstyle from base rise saw drastic decreases, so it's not really the best playstyle to do anymore, except it actually is still the best playstyle to do, but I'll get into that later. But EI Spirit Slash saw a nearly 50% decrease in motion value, so you're literally going to be doing up to half the damage you used to do. Also, Helmbreaker saw drastic drops as well, around 25% less damage than before, and its wirebug cooldown saw a 35% increase in cooldown, so it takes longer for your bugs to refill after using it. And while this style of play still remains meta with using a new move, I believe in base rise, which doesn't have the new moves, these changes are still in effect. So Longsword probably sucks now on base rise if you don't have Sunbreak. RIP. However, there are some buffs to Longsword as well. Sakura Slash was buffed heavily, dealing much more damage now, ironically the same motion values as pre-nerfed EI Spirit Slash. In other words, this skill is a must-have now, as it's also great at triggering rights quickly from non-targeted monsters, and it builds gauge at the cost of one bug. Its elemental values are also pretty nice, so it's great with swords that have good elemental. So now, let's cover the new moves. Perhaps the biggest one that you get near the start of Sunbreak is Sacred Special Sheath, Longsword's new ultimate move. This thing's motion values are off the charts, dealing more than double the damage Helmbreaker does, and they basically slapped a Greysword TCS on for Longsword. The shit just strong for no reason. Like EI, you can only perform this after an attack via R2 plus X, but if you continue holding R2, right trigger, you effectively deplete your gauge to store power to your sword, which the amount of gauges you consume will alter the follow-up attack. Draining one gauge does a single strike, two gauges does two strikes, and three does, well, three. Except that third hits harder than the other two hits combined, and is basically the main one you want to get to. For all of these, you can follow up with spear slashes as well, so long as you have meter. But unique to the third, the fully charged one, you can go into Round Slash or Reckoning immediately, getting you back to white instantly and giving you meter on top. So optimally, Sacred Sheaf only costs 2 gauges if done right, and I recommend Round Slash as is much faster than Reckoning. Also, guess what? This thing has Hyper Armor through the whole animation, letting you take significantly less damage against attacks and just muscle your way through it to land big damage. So no, this thing is not only usable against downed monsters, you can proactively use it for damage, even against anomaly monsters. Since if they hit you, they're gonna blood blight you, but then you're gonna do the damage, which is gonna lifesteal that back. But wait! There's more! We're not done yet though! There's more to the skill. For one, unlike EI, as long as you hold R2, you can stay in the stance indefinitely. Not only can you stay in a stance, but you can move via a direction plus X, the dodge button. So it's a TCS that can move in tank control direction, forward, back, left, right. And going to zero stamina has no penalty. Although obviously you do need some stamina to actually dodge. But this allows you to reposition before releasing your R2 to do your sacred slash attack. However, as discovered, a Veid Extender does affect the distance at which this dodge can move. Not only that, but things like Evade Window or Bubbly Dance as well. And not only, only that, but did you know that going backwards gives you better distance? So ideally, if the monster is far in front of you, you want to enter the stance facing away from the monster, that way you can back hop to them much quicker. Especially with a Fade Extender. I recommend level 2 at least on most of your longsword builds that you want to use this attack proactively. And because getting hit in the stance effectively loses all your gauge, Extender helps fight that downside tremendously. But you still have to be careful if you're going to use this mid fight and not just against a down monster. But we're still not done. The last thing is this thing can counter. There's two points to the animation. One is when you're sliding that long sword into your sheath. During that animation, two counter options open up. Auto and manual release. If you get hit during that sliding animation and have gauge, you'll perform an auto counter. This will eat a gauge but save you from the attack. 
Option two is to manually release R2. So R2 plus X to start the stance and then just release your finger off R2. If you time this right to counter a monster's attack or roar, you will keep your gauge, nullify the monster's attack, you will gain meter, and you can go into round slash immediately afterward. So Sacred Sheath by itself can build you up to red, you don't have to depend solely on Sakura or EI or even Foresight Slash. And you can just use delayed normal attacks until you're ready to counter. So very, very powerful skill. And Crit Draw does affect the Sacred Sheath attack. So you can get 60% affinity in just 3 skill slots, easily getting to 100% with the old weakness exploit. The second skill is Tempered Spirit Blade, R2 plus Triangle. This is more akin to Valor style counter from GU that basically upgrades your gauge if you counter correctly. The timing is very tight and doesn't do a lot of damage, but its wire buck cooldown is fast, around 8 seconds, making it a consistent way to up your gauge. And it also gives you 50% of your meter as well. And depending on the monster, Sakura may not be safe to spam so often, like against a certain endgame monster, so this is a very nice way to get Gage in tandem with Sacred since you can't use EI and Sacred at the same time without swapping scrolls. It's also great against double hits as you can Temper Sheave the first and then Foresight Slash the second since you'll always have Gage for it because of Temper's effect. And to unlock this and the next skill you will have to reach Master Rank 4 in Sunbreak. And lastly Harvest Moon, replacing Serene Pose, this creates a Sonic Ring AoE giving your counter attacks additional hits. This brings EI Slash back to its former glory and damage, but it has many caveats. First, the ring is static, it doesn't move, so you have to stay in the ring to benefit from it. If that wasn't bad enough, you can't leave the ring. Getting near the boundary will make it turn red, and getting too far will knock you back into it. And if you get knocked back in twice, your ring disappears, and so does your damage and bugs you wasted, which this thing costs 2 bugs to produce. And perhaps the most severe penalty is you cannot fully put away your weapon. If you do so to ride your dog, or even just after finishing a round slash for example and letting the animation go through all the way, your ring disappears. So for most people outside of pros, you will never use this dog trash skill because it's got too many restrictions. Not including the monster just leaving out of it, making this unplayable in multiplayer since that happens so often. So I think they do need to rebalance the skill to make it more usable for the average player. But those are all the new skills in depth. And finally, we can get into the new best combos. Combo 1 is your opening combo when you have zero gauge. This comprises of two Sakura slashes and a counter, your choice. You should do this combo at the start of every fight, as you can easily counter the roar of the monster at the start. For example's sake, I go here with Sakura, EI Spear slash the Roar with R2 plus X into R2, and then another Sakura slash R2 plus Triangle. Alternatively, you can go Sakura into Sacred Sheave counter, which cuts Sakura's animation down, into another Sakura, Red Gauge, in a few seconds. This leads you into the second or third combo, which is purely just using Sacred Sheave. This combo is for wanting to use this skill proactively. You turn away from the monster, hit circle for the thrust, and then while facing away still, load up your Sacred Sheath. And now you can super back hop quicker and release the attack whenever. Remember, you have hyper armor, so releasing sooner during a monster's attack is better than later. Also, you can change the direction of your Sacred Sheath by holding the direction you want and then letting go of R2. Otherwise, when a monster is knocked down from a trip, KO, trap, sleep, whatever, you're always going to want to use Sacred Sheath over Helmbreaker. And if you want to maximize damage on a sleeping monster, make sure your final hit is the one that wakes it up. The third combo is for Helmbreaker if you're not comfortable with Sacred Sheath proactive playstyle. You will need to have Sakura Slash on one scroll and then Helmbreaker on another, but you can go combo 1 and then skill swap scrolls via L2 plus Triangle plus Circle into Helmbreaker, R2 plus Triangle. If you press skill swap fast enough after Sakura, it'll cut down the animation, Obviously, for maximum damage though, only use Helmbreaker after reaching red gauge. And lastly, combo 4 is basically just a playstyle. <laughs> the fastest killing times so far have been revolved around classic longsword, except you use Harvest Moon. So if you want to get the fastest times, you start the fight with Harvest Moon and then EI your way up to Helmbreakers. When a monster is knocked down, you skill swap to the other scroll to then use Sacred Sheath into Sakura, then skill swap back to Red Scroll for EI and Helmbreaker again. Combo 3. 
so you only swap scrolls with this style just for Sacred Sheave during opportune moments. And yeah, that is the meta speedrun playstyle currently, as I haven't seen too many people use Sacred proactively outside of myself on stream. But for Switch skill loadouts, I think this is the best general use one. Red scroll with EI and Helmbreaker and Harvest, your choice of Reckoning or Round Slash, and then blue scroll with Sakura and Sacred and Round Slash, and both with double hit draw attack. Poor Serene Pose, you were forgotten this DLC. And one last tip, since Longsword is so wirebug heavy now, Wirebug Whisperer 3 is practically mandatory, I feel. I would sacrifice some damage to slot it in and also get a cat with the Wirebug support move that leaves a Wirebug every so often. You want three Wirebugs as much as possible, so make sure to start a fight with three bugs always. But that's my weapon guide for Longsword. Hope it helps you guys out, sorry it's late, but hope you appreciate it either way. And if so, give the video a like. Algorithm stuff. I currently have a early game and vampire longsword build up. Meta builds will be next. Leave a comment of which playstyle you found the most success with. And if you want to see more Sunbreak videos, join the Ninja Clan by subscribing and hitting that dang notification bell for more Sunbreak epicness. Ooh, I killed him! <laughs>